This is Daniel Alec of Grunstyle, and you're watching Living Money Smart. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here in Grunt Style here with CEO Daniel Alaric. Very excited here. Uh, Daniel's a huge inspiration. I met him a few, was it a few months ago at Bunker Labs, which is a great operation there to expose entrepreneurship to veterans, aspiring veterans, and obviously like Daniel in the grind, running a hundred million dollar company. So I'm really excited to be here. So Daniel, come, I, we were just in your office. We saw your, your drill sergeant hat. You know, Marines call it drill instructor, but Army's drill sergeant. Mad respect to your service. What aspects and attributes do you think veterans have that translate easily to entrepreneurship? Definitely the work ethic. You know, uh, burning the midnight oil, as the civilians call it. Uh, getting the job done is what we, uh, <laughs> what the military <laughs> might call it, right? <laughs> just gotta get it done. Right. So there is no hours. It's just, here. here's a mission and I'm gonna go until it's accomplished. So that's a big asset that every veteran has. Why don't you think more veterans transition or even consider entrepreneurship? I think a lot of them do, I, but I, I think a lot of them really, really struggle once they get their, their they start get their feet wet yeah. because there's a there's a few missing gaps that the military will never teach you about entrepreneurship and, and civilian workforce. Right. Um, you know, the biggest one is sales. Selling is is a huge tool that you know veterans really need to learn if you want to be a successful entrepreneur or just civilian in general. So, how did you overcome the patience? Uh, of learning sales because a lot of guys don't like rejection. How'd you do it? It's it was never about being rejected. It's mm -hmm. it's always about getting that job done. So if I talk okay. to you, I'm like, hey, this is what I have. Do you, are you interested? And you say yeah. no. I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Guess what? Hey, you are you interested? No. Okay, cool. Hey, are you are you interested? Yes. Okay, that's great. Let's do it. Next guy. And you just keep going. If I waste my time with you, yeah. now we're 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 having a conflict or an engagement, right? Yeah. But as soon as I recognize that. You don't want You're it. an impasse, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to look for the path of least resistance. What jobs in, the, in active duty military? I know a lot of guys say, well, so what do you do when you get out? Be a cop, be a firefighter, right. postal worker. Was there a certain job that you were thinking about doing after leading active duty? Well, I was a personal trainer for a while and I had some front end web development. I mean, there's, yes, and they're all jobs. You know, I was really looking for something where I could continue the mission that, uh, right. or the whole reason why I joined the military in the first place is I wanted to serve something that was bigger than myself. Yeah. And we're able to do that here with all the awesome team that we have here. Mm -hmm. Because our, our mission is not just to make some great products and ship it to the customer as quickly as possible. It's right. actually to, we want to make every home in America a patriotic one. Forbes Magazine, you yeah. mentioned there you started a company $1,200. What was the first thing you spent your money on to build it to become a $100 million company? I don't remember the very first purchase, mm -hmm. but what, uh, something that I remember was the biggest purchase for us at the time is I bought this huge billboard right outside Fort Benning. As you, or you're coming into the gate. Yeah. It was like an exit three coming in. You know, the gate is like exit zero. Yeah. Right up yeah. the highway, a big billboard. And it had our name on it with our website. And it cost us $1,000 a month. But all these graduations going on, families, everyone's going to see it. It's going to put us on the map. It was going to blow us up. Did absolutely nothing. Zero. It was, it was oh. that almost bankrupt us. I had no money. You know, $1,000 a month. I'm like, this is going to make us so much money. Nothing. It almost ran us dry. So what did you learn from that? How did you How did you improvise uh, adapt? Invest in things that you know. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and uh, always have some sort of risk management. Mm -hmm. What did you find out that you did know? A lot of hard work. That's yeah. really what it is. There is, you know, people, people always asking, saying, what's that one thing that got you there or, or whatever. I mean, nowadays, the mm -hmm. only one thing that gets us there is, is a great team, honestly. Yeah. My job is to make sure that they have the right strategy in place that allows them to be successful. If they're successful, our company's mission is successful. You know, you may not know, you, you're not gonna have a hit on that first one. Right. But if you can zero it in, yeah. you can be very successful. Then you can fire for effect. You got it. Bam. When you're talking about the Illinois state income tax, you're kind of ticked off about it. Everybody saw that tweet, everybody saw the Facebook update. How do you feel about Illinois constantly mismanaging their finances? Because we're talking about budgets. You're right. They're mismanaging their budget, mismanaging yeah. And then they're parlaying that, that on Illinois. I mean, uh, Daniel, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Honestly, so it's, we're talking about nickels and dimes, right? Mm -hmm. But then I saw some emails from guess, some guys in, in, internally, and I got it from our HR uh, yeah. uh, manager, and he was like, hey, just letting everyone know, it wasn't a decrease on your check, there's no error, it's the Illinois tax uh, went up. Because it went retroactive to July 1st. Right. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's not fair. If I'm sitting out here trying to uh, put sleeves on a shirt all day for yeah. ten, ten, uh, eight, 10 hours a day, sometimes I'm working overtime, Saturdays or whatnot, and then all of a sudden I get, I'm getting paid less for that because someone can't balance their budget, yeah. that's not fair. What does free enterprise, capitalism, and entrepreneurship mean to you? It's the ability to go have a dream, and it's the difference between your dream and then executing on to make a reality. And it hasn't changed your life? I, absolutely. It's changed a lot of people's lives. I mean, the people here changed my life. Absolutely. Both ways. That's it. Right. That's it. That makes Daniel, suck a little bit less. <laughs> appreciate you being absolutely. such a great hospitable CEO. 
So the reason why I started the business is because, you know, how many times you see a guy in act, on active duty with an officer enlisted messing up the money, right? And yeah. bad decision with money. So, um, and bad decision with, with marriage, bad decision with relationships. And so it's a situation that we all find ourselves in. It's, it's got to be a better way. I mean, that's a, well, I literally Googled, you know, what is business? I didn't know what I was doing. And so then I'm like, okay, you know what? If, uh, you know, I have my mission that I want to do in business, but you can't do it without a lot of money. Yeah. And so, or, so the whole mission is if I put a thousand dollars in, how fast can I turn that into two thousand dollars? Is that going to be a month or three days? You know, it's that whole objective, and that still doesn't change. Now, just the numbers are bigger. Right. Did you have like a big campaign or like a lot of revenue campaign? Like, all right, this we got us. Nope. Like, it's all. It's all. Yeah. Eighty-five percent of our business is done by one customer on one. You know, onesies and twosies. Good for you. Good for you. Well, we're in about eleven hundred stores, but that makes up ten percent of our business. If there's a customer or a client that can call you at three in the morning and you have to take his call, you don't have enough clients, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. How have you chosen your, your verticals, the verticals that you've, you know, Bourbon and Alpha, Alpha Post? So believe it or not, we say no a lot, almost daily to opportunities. It's easy to drown, so much opportunity. Um, but we only do um, verticals, if you will, okay. uh, or horizontals, uh, or any any other entity, if it as long as it supports our primary mission at Glenstone. Which it doesn't, which is uh, either supports our company or our patriotic mission. So that somehow complement what we're doing already. And then we have Alpha Outpost, uh, which is same customer base, just with gear products. Mm -hmm. So not much of a stretch. America Bourbon, uh, we it was a little bit different, but um, but on it, it's easy for us to, to market that product, and we're with a partner who's taking care of all the back end stuff. Because otherwise, we wouldn't get into it. That's not our forte. I'm not going to get in something I don't, I don't know, yeah. right? But we want to. The, the main thing is the main thing. So we we worked on this bourbon flavor for about six months, and then we just nailed it. You'll try it. It's really good, and it's the only bourbon I'll drink. And everyone who's come in contact with it just like wow, they're just shocked how good it is. Are you selling it here, by the way? Uh, we just launched it a week and a half ago. We had a thousand cases. We sold out in two hours. So it's great. You go. You're awesome, man. It's great. So we have a, a whole a bunch of stores lined up. This is just in Texas too. Now we're gonna bring it up to Illinois. Now I have 80 bottles here, of course. Um, but so we're gonna start sending it to a bunch of our uh, some of our ambassadors and you know our UFC guys and people we do business with. So we can try it. Our brand has to be authentic through and through. So even if even if you're not in the military, you better still get the brand. That's fine. So so a lot of our UFC fighters don't have anything to do with the military. Huge supporters of it. They understand the you know personal commitment, and they just have a lot of the same values. Yeah. So it's important. That's very very important to us. Our NASCAR driver, right? stay smart. You're watching Living Money Smart. Stay tuned.